In the year 1500, if you asked any learned scholar about the structure of the cosmos, you would likely hear an explanation that placed a motionless Earth at the center of all creation. The cosmos was thought to be a grand hierarchy, an intricate arrangement of celestial orbs in perfect spheres, with the sun, moon, and stars rotating daily around the fixed world below. This geocentric model had the venerable approval of Aristotle's philosophy and Ptolemy's mathematical refinements, and it was anchored in Christian theology. The earth, according to this view, was not just physically at the center, it was also the site where all the spiritual drama unfolded. Heaven lay beyond the outermost sphere, the realm of angels and the seat of God, while below men lived out their days. Scholars and clerics assumed this was how the universe worked, and the church, by and large, found comfort in placing humanity literally at the centre of divine attention. Against this venerable backdrop, a quiet, unassuming canon from the small city of Frombork in Poland began to nurture ideas that, if written out plainly, could be considered heretical or at least quite unsettling. His name was Nicolaus Copernicus. Born in 1473 in the city of Turin, he was orphaned at a young age but raised by his uncle, Lucas Watson Road, who ensured that he received an excellent education. As a boy, Copernicus studied in Krakow, then later in Bologna and Padua in Italy, places rich with new humanist learning. Originally, he intended to study law and medicine, fields that would benefit his clerical standing and provide him with a stable income, but he harbored a passion for astronomy, poring over manuscripts in libraries whenever he could. In those days, universities taught astronomy mainly to update or refine the Ptolemaic model used for calendar calculations and astrology, but Copernicus's curiosity went beyond mere tinkering with tables of planetary motions. He was bothered by the cumbersome complexity of Ptolemy's geocentric system. It involved epicycles, small circles upon larger circles, to account for the puzzling paths of planets like Mars and Venus as observed from Earth. These layers upon layers of circles worked mathematically, but it felt inelegant and contrived. Most astronomers at the time took that complexity for granted, or refined it only slightly, hoping to match observational data a bit better. Copernicus, however, quietly entertained a dangerous thought. What if it was not the sun that went around the earth, but the earth that circled the sun? His conversations with fellow scholars in Italy were guarded. Though ancient thinkers like Aristarchus of Samos had once posited a moving earth and a central sun, that idea had long been considered unsupportable, if not philosophically, then certainly scripturally. 